we will read today from the book of Daniel the prophet from the seventh chapter. Daniel chapter seven, glory be to God. We'll be reading from the New King James Version. Chapter seven. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my visions by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, it was raised up on one side, and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream is issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him, ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated. The books were opened. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by, and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me, and made known to me, the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom for ever, even for ever and ever. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured, broke in pieces, and trampled the residue with its feet. And the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horns which came up before which three fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. 
I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them, until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Amen. This is the second year of the King Belshazzar, that disrespectful king, who even more the night that he was going to die, acted greatly disrespectful before God and men, and he took the vessels, the holy vessels of the temple of God, and with these he enjoyed himself in that great feast of sin that he gave. But even though in that time, in that kingdom, Belshazzar was disrespectful, and he was a man that even though had heard about God from Nebuchadnezzar, and all his kingdom, but also his mother, were people who knew God, he continued in his disrespect, but God, under any circumstances, continues his work. He continues his visitations to his people, to his men. So this is amazing, dear brethren, how God chooses men. And he intervenes, and he reveals, and he visits. And someone would say now, on one hand, Belshazzar is in disrespect, and on the other hand, Daniel is in blessing. So this second year, in a night vision, in a dream, God visits Daniel, so he can reveal to him his plan. And Daniel, of course, wrote it down. This is the word of God that we are read, reading, the prophecies of Daniel. It is this blessed book of Daniel that 2,500 years before describes with great details our days and especially the days after the rapture of the church. The main trait of Daniel from now on is that he doesn't see the church of Christ at all. He doesn't see the period of grace. It isn't revealed to him by God. But he sees the history of humanity through the people of Israel. The work of God through the people of Israel. So he shows him now, in his vision, and he describes it here in his dream, he shows him a first beast, which is like a lion, but it has wings of an eagle. They were plucked off these wings, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And this is the kingdom of Babylon, and the king of that kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar. Seventy years this kingdom was kept, and you will see that all the beasts that God will show us, or that God will show to Daniel, and Daniel will describe to us, and the word of God will explain to us, they are continuous kingdoms. And one great break will take place between, between the end of the fourth kingdom and before the kingdom of the Antichrist. So all these kingdoms, these empires, prevailed on all the known world back then. 
And the main characteristic of these kingdoms is that if you see in verse 2, Daniel says, Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four beasts came up from the sea. If we go then to the revelation of John, we will see the same words. And you see how beautifully the Word of God not only explains, but also aligns the Old Testament with the New Testament. So John says in the Revelation, when God shows him again things through visions, in the 13th chapter, he says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now let's pay attention to this. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Leopard, bear, and lion, the same beast that are described to Daniel 2,500 years ago for us, 500, 600 years ago for John, but with a different order. John here sees the bear and backward. In other words, John sees the past, but Daniel sees the future. He is in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. He is, he is in the time period between 600 and 550 BC, somewhere in there. And he sees the first beast, Babylon, which was like a lion. Immediately after this, and suddenly, a, another beast, a second, like a bear, which are the Medes and Persians. And the first empire lasted from 606 till 536 B.C., 70 years. The second beast, Medes and Persians, are around 200 years, immediately after. And suddenly, another beast, a second, like a bear, and it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It had, in other words, it was eating a side in his mouth. He had three ribs in his mouth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. This is the second kingdom, we said, the Medes and Persians, that lasted from 536 till 330. And then the Greek empire appeared on the earth as a leopard. So it says about this, After this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. These four wings and these four heads are the four descendants of Alexander the Great that we will see in Daniel being described again. He will describe again the king and the Greek empire with greater detail, but we will see it these next Mondays to come. After this, verse 7, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. It is the Roman Empire here. But... Immediately after the Roman Empire, and as one beast, Daniel sees, I was considering the horns, the ten horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. He sees this as one beast through which a small horn will come out, and this is the Antichrist. You see that no revelation, at least up to this time, does Daniel have about salvation, about Christ, about Jesus until this time, but we will see later on that he has, especially though he has no revelation about these 2,000 years of the dispensation of grace. But the Roman Empire, he sees it as one beast, along with the European Union, through which the 
small horn will come out, which will be the Antichrist and the kingdom of the Antichrist. You know, dear brethren, that after the Roman Empire that lasted from 150 BC until, but Greece was, let's go back, the Greek Empire was from 330 until 145. From 145, the Romans stood up and they lasted until 100 after Christ. So only the first century of the Christian era. And since that time, from 100 AC, now again, we see Europe coming up with one currency. And it is amazing. In other words, at this moment, we are witnesses. We see the Roman Empire coming back to life. And indeed, this is a special empire now. And let's see how nicely he describes this. The one little horn came up. The rest were plucked out, and he did not kill, he did not devour, he did not trample, he did not conquer, he did not reign with war, as it was, let's say, the Medes and Persians that devoured much flesh, or as the leopard was that had four heads and it was given dominion, but the characteristic of the Roman Empire was harshness, but the characteristic of the small horn which is the continuity in the resurrection of the Roman Empire through the European Union is that in the small horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. Great promises and eyes that are eyes like men. This is the trait of the European Union. It doesn't have wars. It doesn't have conquering. But it promises great things, it tempts all the nations around it, and in an amazing way, all the nations wants definitely to become a part and to enter the European Union. All nations want this. Turkey, which we believe, without us being certain, this is how it appears through the scripture, it will never be a part of Europe until the European Union prevails over all humanity. It will never be a part, because it was never also a part of the Roman Empire, even though in the end, the Romans had reached even down there. But, but the struggle of all the nations of Europe, and this is happening for the first time in history. The expansion of empires and all the history of humankind up to now was with wars. And with wars that were harsh. Even with Hitler. And he had also dreamed, he had envisioned the European Union. Napoleon also had dreamt the European Union. All the great generals and conquerors had envisioned this union, the European Union, but none of them was able to achieve it. And now, on its own, on their own, all nations want to come under the European Union. And this is happening now that there still is not this dictator or leader of this European Union, of this empire, because this is going to become an empire. Because at one point there were seven or eight, they became ten, they became fifteen, now around fifty more will enter this European Union. I don't know how many more, but it is amazing, this phenomenon, dear brethren. One nation increasing, conquering the other nations without war, without battles. And with great joy, they want to come under the European Union, all nations. Why? Because there are promises. That the European Union, and this will happen, the promises are that the European Union will become the greatest of all nations. It is the opposite. It will be the enemy, let's say, of the United States. Very difficult, to the point of impossible, because it doesn't have any natural wealth. It doesn't have power. It doesn't have petrol. But in other chapters, in other lessons, we will see how they will reach Jerusalem and Arabia so they can get the oil. But the characteristic of our time is the resurrection of this Roman Empire without wars. It is an amazing sign. No one, not even the scholars of the scriptures, 50 years ago or 60, could not calculate this. No human mind foresaw 
an expansion of an empire without wars. No one thought of this. Only the plan of God, only the wisdom of God saw this, dear brethren, and permitted this. Hallelujah. And this small horn hasn't come up yet. We haven't seen three falling, and I believe that they will not see three falling. We will leave when these things happen, with the grace of Christ. Let us all be up there and see all these things from up high, up there and meet our Lord in the sky. But this hasn't happened yet. What has happened though? We are up to this point. I was considering the horns. Now we are at this point. He is considering, we are considering the horns, the authority and the increasing and the flourishing of the European Union without still the ruler being revealed. And the ruler is referred as the small horn by the word of God, as a despised one. He will not be a great ruler, but he will be one who will give his soul to Satan and Satan will give him his authority, his power and his kingdom. And you see the imitation of the devil. As God is tree you and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, also the dragon, the ancient dragon, the ancient snake, wants to be, to imitate God. And he creates for himself an essence of God. He presents himself as a God. So he can sit on the throne of God. And he also will have his own Jesus Christ, the Antichrist, and he will also have his own helper, the spirit of truth, the false prophet. Because now what we see on earth is the comforter is working because the Lord now on earth is the helper, the Holy Spirit, who prays and intercedes for us here on earth. At the same time, we have Jesus Christ who is our intercessor and intercedes for us in heaven. So the perfect imitation or the attempt, it's not perfect, we will be like our Lord up there, the church of Christ. But the attempt of the imitation of the devil is amazing. He wants to present himself similar to God. But we thank God, dear brethren, because Christ has crushed his head. He is defeated and he cannot touch the children of God and he cannot reveal and Satan cannot reveal his power. The Antichrist cannot reveal it and the authority of the false prophet as long as there is a church of Christ here on earth. He is working in mystery. These things are hidden. He is afraid. But with great cunningness, he does his work. I remember I had met some Satanists, not personally, and when they were men, they were men who served and worshipped the devil. They told me, you will leave and the earth will be ours. Did you hear what they said? You will leave. We know that you're going to go. You're going to go to heaven. But we don't want heaven. We want the earth. The earth will be ours. How mistaken they are. For seven years, the most, afterward Jesus Christ will come again. Hallelujah. He will come and He will create His kingdom. But did you see how Satan deceives people? But let's see now what happens after that with the grace of Christ. So the rapture of the church takes place and immediately that which Daniel was looking at starts taking up flesh and blood. A little horn coming up among the ten horns. Now you see at this time it's not one kingdom but there are kingdoms on the earth. Now what the meaning is of these ten horns for the European Union there are many interpretations, many explanations, many opinions and thoughts. But these are human. You know, dear brethren, the revelation of John is revealed as time goes by. It is hidden. Slowly, slowly, God reveals things to us. We see them. As we said, no one expected and no one thought ever that the European Union will be united or Germany will be united. But we'll see later on that God says, the word of God says about Hitler. He writes about the fall of socialism of the Soviet Union. He writes about everything. But... But before these things happened, we couldn't understand the Word of God. But when they did happen, we said, there it is. He wrote it in the book. But one thing, of course, we will not see, and it's the revelation. We will not see the revelation. We will not know the face of the Antichrist. We will never understand, as long as we are on earth, who the Antichrist is. And let us not trouble our minds, because this is a hidden secret. 
It cannot be revealed. The lawless one cannot be revealed. The one who exalts himself above every god, he cannot stand in front because he who dwells inside us is greater than the one that dwells in the world. He cannot stand before us. I don't know if this has ever occurred to you, but it has occurred to me. Not many times, but a few. I meet someone on the street without me knowing him. Some man who is demon possessed, he sees me and he starts running. I remember once, and I was driving in my car, and I turned the corner and got on a main highway where there's some shops, anywhere, and I wanted to come out to Marusi, and there was great traffic and I was going slowly, slowly, and I saw a man selling lottery tickets. It was summer, had the window down, and he started saying, something smelling, something stinks. He was walking next to the car. He was coming this way and I was going that way. What? And he was... And he was shouting, something is stinking, something smells. I looked at him. And when I came close to him, he turned around, he looked at me. I was the one who was smelling, but for him only. I had the essence of Christ. If only you saw how he acted. What can I say? But he, cannot, he could not stand before the children of God. They cannot stand before the children of God. They disappear, they run, they can't. And then the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He cannot be revealed. The Antichrist cannot. He cannot stand before the church of Christ. And indeed, dear brethren, what church? The church of the later days, which will be filled with power of the Holy Spirit. Filled with holiness. He cannot stand. He cannot reveal himself. Whatever he may do. So Daniel did not have this revelation. Because he doesn't see the church of Christ anywhere. And we thank God because Daniel, to Daniel, he has revealed the work of God for the people of Israel. These are the famous 70 weeks of Daniel that we will see in the lessons to come. The 70 weeks of time that God gave for the people of Israel, to the people of Israel, by keeping 69 weeks and then one week in the end. 69 weeks where until the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, then there, there's a break for 2,000 years, and the last week, which is for the people of Israel, for the salvation of the people of Israel, is the seven-year kingdom of the Antichrist, where the first three and a half years, they will receive the Antichrist as the, the Messiah, and when they see him sitting on the throne of God as a God, then they will understand that not only he is not the Messiah, the abomination of desolation that was spoken by the prophet Daniel, that we will read later on, and then the two prophets who will be preaching the word of God for three and a half years will be received as men of God. God then will outpour a spirit of grace and mercy on the people of Israel, and they will seek the one whom they wounded. And then the great tribulation of Israel will begin. The four, first three and a half years, the Antichrist will give his mark and his image, so they will worship. And I read also, and it really amazed me this, we will read it, I hope today, that the false prophet commands men to make the image of the Antichrist and to worship it. It's not the Antichrist who makes the image, but we will see this afterward. Let us go on now. Now, the characteristic of the times after the rapture of the church now, of the kingdom of the Antichrist, the small horn, is that he has eyes, he has knowledge, that's what this means, knowledge shall increase, he knows everything, he has abilities, and this is amazing, everything is amazing that has to do with the end of the world. We see that he has eyes, and a mouth speaking pompous words. These are his characteristics. And you know, now with internet and with technology, there is perfect knowledge. There is nothing that is not known. The internet is an amazing achievement, a technological invention that wasn't invented by one man. Neither does it belong to any man. It is a network that was created on its own. And whoever wants enters this network and increases it and multiplies it if he wants. Now, anything you want to know about, anything you want to seek, you get in there and probably you don't have enough time to read everything that's on the net. And if you enter the internet, you feel like a ruler. You feel that you have the world at your feet. You have sin. You have violence. You have anything you like in your hands. 
Also, if you proceed into virtual reality, which has come to our days, it's not something that will happen in the future. Virtual reality will not be only that you will see things, but you will live things also. So they enter your heart, your soul, your mind, your emotions. They enter everywhere. This is an amazing thing that the trait of that small horn is eyes and a mouth that speaks pompous words. Of course, let us not mention the fact that sin is almost reaching fullness. And when sin will reach fullness, and let us be careful of the words that God uses, they are perfect. The scripture says, we will read later on in Daniel, when sin reaches its fullness, then a ruler will rise up who is of harsh features. And there is not a moment when sin will reach fullness, there will always be men that are believers. There is only one moment when sin will be full in humanity. The second after the rapture of the church. Because all the saints will leave and go to heaven. Who will be left behind? The ones that did not receive the word of truth. They did not accept Jesus Christ. They did not believe, they did not call upon the name of Jesus that they may be saved. But under any situations, God finds a way to save men. And for that reason, during the seven year period of the Antichrist, again, as we said, the gospel will, will be preached. And here I want to make a great distinction. Because only Jesus Christ saves, and only with the gospel of Jesus Christ is any man saved. But, in the period of grace, men are saved by whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved because it is written in the gospel. But in the time of the seven year period, again by the name of Jesus Christ they are saved, but now not by grace, but with law. Whoever doesn't worship the image of the Antichrist and does not put on the mark, 666 on his right hand or on his forehead. So salvation comes only with the gospel of Jesus Christ and only by the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat it again. Now by grace, whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved. Then by law, not the law of Moses, but the law of the gospel. Whoever doesn't worship the image of the Antichrist and whoever doesn't put on the mark on his right hand or forehead, he shall be saved. And immediately after the manifestation of the Antichrist, the revelation of God toward Daniel goes on saying, it is the end of the seven year period. I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousand ministered to him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Here, dear brethren, is the second coming, as we will see. This is judgment. This is the judgment that Christ will stand, not the final judgment where everyone will be risen. But here, it is the second coming. Here is the judgment of the rapture and of the gathering of the saints. But, so we can, if we see it later on, we'll see how the word of God itself explains it to us. I watched then, because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning of flame. It is the second coming where our Lord Jesus Christ takes the Antichrist and the false prophet and he throws them, as it says in Revelation, into the lake of fire. It is these two persons, only these two persons, who initiate hell, perdition. And here God explains to Daniel, the word of God explains to him, the reason why the Lord doesn't long suffer with the Antichrist and the false prophet, but before the final judgment comes, he condemns these men to eternal perdition. It is, these are the exception, dear brethren, because even the devil himself and Satan, he does not cast them into perdition, into the lake of fire. He binds them for a thousand years. These two are the exception of the judgment of God. God makes exceptions. 
he made an exception for Moses and Israel back then and the ten plagues of Egypt, he makes an exception for us today also. And in this world of suffering and sin, we live a holy and clean life and a happy life. This is an exception by God. But uh, here he will make the first tremendous exception, as he had done, if you remember, to the rebellion of Korah, Dothan, and Abiram, those two men who resisted Moses. And he made a great exception. Those were the two men who went living down to Hades. The earth opened up and they went alive down to Hades. Why? Because they resisted Moses. These two men will resist, the false prophet and the Antichrist now, they will resist the coming of Christ. They will gather all the armies, and as they will see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and Jesus Christ coming in clouds with all the saints behind Him, but also with all His angels, He will set in His mind and in His heart, of the heart of the Antichrist and the false prophet, to resist and to make war with whom? With the coming of Jesus Christ. This is the exception. And for that reason, dear brethren, let us be careful of one thing, we the Christians, in our relationship with God and with men. Do not resist the work of God. Do not go against Jesus Christ when He is working. He will get you out of the way. He will push you away. He doesn't stop His work. The Antichrist cannot stop the second coming and the regeneration, the creation of the kingdom of God here on earth. He will make an exception, God. Remember another blessed exception, Mary Magdalene. She was looking for Him, filled with love. Dear brethren, exceptions are given for two reasons, from love and from hatred. Mary Magdalene loved Jesus so much that even though he had to go first and present himself to his father and then to be revealed and reveal his resurrection to men, especially to Mary who was seeking him, he revealed himself to her and when she went near to touch him, he said, do not touch me because I have not gone to my father yet. But the Antichrist and the false prophet they have great hatred because they are losing their kingdom. They are losing their authority. They are losing earth. They are losing everything. As the devil also, he has great wrath because he knows that his end is near. And God gives the great exception now and hear now how it is described by God. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed. He was given to perdition and given to the burning of flame. If we see this, dear brethren, in the Revelation, it reads in chapter 19, verse 20, These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So he continues now. God continues to reveal to Daniel. So it says in verse 13, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, now he sees Jesus Christ coming down, coming with the clouds of, man, of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in His kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Let us see now the characteristics of the second coming. Jesus Christ appeared in heaven. He came to the presence of God, to God the Father. They brought Him in and He was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve Him. And he means in a rod of iron. The ones who remain, the residue, will not serve him. Let us see the course of things. Everyone who did not put on the mark and did not worship the image of the Antichrist, either they were put to death, either the few that remained were gathered by the angels, and they were found in heaven also taking part in the first resurrection. These are the friends of the bride. But the bride is the church that will start, that will begin the first resurrection from the rapture of the church. 
So whoever has gone to fight and to resist, as the scripture says in verse 12, as we read, so on one hand, the Antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into the lake of fire, into perdition, into the burning flame, and the rest of the armies, as for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, their dominion was taken away, because the devil was bound for a thousand years in the bottomless pit, this, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time, for a thousand years. And if we want to see this in the Revelation also, so we can see everything at the same time through the Gospel, the Scripture says in Revelation 19.19, 19, And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image. The false prophet was the one who deceived humanity to worship the image of the Antichrist. So after the Lord came, he cast those two into the lake of fire. Then the rest, the rest of the armies who went to resist the coming of Jesus Christ, were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. These were not cast into the lake of fire into eternal perdition. But they were killed, and it is, as Daniel says, their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. For a thousand years, they will take part in the second resur resurrection, except the Antichrist and the false prophet. And so, for a thousand years, there will be the kingdom of Christ, he will reign, and let's see this, brethren, he will sit, Christ will sit on the throne of David for a thousand years. And there are two thrones, the throne of God in heaven and the throne of Jesus, the throne of David on earth. For a thousand years, Jesus will reign over men with a rod of iron, for he will be given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that by force all peoples, all nations, and all languages should serve him. So one kingdom where all men, and we will see who these are, will be subjected to Christ. Who will these men be? They will be the ones who have the mark on their hand, and they were not part of the armies of the Antichrist, but also their children. They will be the ones who will continue to live in this natural body upon the earth. And because there will not be the devil and Satan, and because there will not be the Antichrist and the false prophet, and the lifespan of man will not be 70, 80 years in the millennium of Jesus, but it says that a child will be 100 years old, a baby, 100 years old, and the old man will be 800, 900 years old. So the earth will be exactly as it was first created. So for that reason, again, in a thousand years, we will have reached a population of six or seven billion when Satan will be released. And we'll not speak now about the unleashing of Satan. But in this a thousand year reign of Jesus, Jesus will be king. We will be rulers, priests, and kings of the Most High. We will have authority over ten cities, five cities, depending on how much we have worked here on earth, how, what fruit we will present to Jesus, then our reward will be given, and let us pay attention to this also, according to our works. Not the pastor will have more reward than the deacon, or the brother, or the sister. Everyone will have, God is righteous, everyone will get his reward, depending on the labor he put, put in the work of God. And we will be very surprised up there, dear brethren. For that reason, do not be sad when you labor in the work of God. Be happy, be glad, praise God that He is doing grace and He is giving you the chance to get tired for Him. So when the time will come, that time to give you your reward, your reward will be complete. Let us see now also the interpretation, how God explains it. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by, 
and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me, and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Those great beasts, which are four, they are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. You see, he is speaking about four beasts. And as we said before, it is Babylon, it is the Medes and Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans, who he considers one beast. As in the revelation that we read beforehand, our Lord reveals the Antichrist as one beast. He sees it one beast. And he says, it was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and the mouth, the mouth of a lion. It's one beast. But this beast is the Roman Empire, a break for the dispensation of grace. Then the same beast continues through the European Union and through the European Union, which is the same beast, only that, as we said beforehand, they are not conquerors. The small horn will come out, and let's hear about the small horn, how it is described by the Word of God. 19th verse. Then, but let me not forget verse 18. Immediately after the fourth beast, but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and the thousand-year reign, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. One thing that I forgot to tell you is that there are two thrones. One throne of God in heaven, on earth the throne of Christ that starts with the throne of David, but, but after the millennium, the throne, that's why it says here the throne of Christ will remain forever and ever and ever. So in chapter 22 of Revelation, it says, so we can not turn back to Revelation again tonight. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, and the middle of the street, etc., etc. And then it says that, verse 3 of the 22nd chapter, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants, Saul, shall serve him and they shall reign forever and ever. After the millennium, when the Father subdues everything under the feet of Jesus, and when he says everything, he means except himself, then Christ will come and give up everything that was given to him by God in his hands, to God himself, and then Christ and God will become all in all God. From where he left, as he did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, there again he will return, as it is written in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that is what Christ will go back to, and the church will reign forever and ever along with him. And as Christ says, because I overcame, and when did he overcome? Victory is in the end, my brethren. The one who endures until the end, he shall be saved. That is when we will overcome. Because I overcame, my father let me sit in his throne. He took the throne of Christ and he put it into the throne of the father. And if you overcome, I will let you sit on my throne. And for that reason, dear brethren, the father keeps Jesus in his throne because he overcame. And Christ keeps in his throne us. And the unbelievable thing is that the church, Christ and the Father, will be on the same throne. Glory be to the name of God. It is that thing that Satan desired and was jealous of. He wanted to go up on the high mountain of God and the northern place of heaven to sit with God to be similar to God. But he will never achieve this because it is prepared for him and his angels eternal perdition. Let us continue in verse 19. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which is the Antichrist, not yet, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze. This is the Roman Empire, which devoured, broke in pieces, and trampled the residue with its feet, and the ten horns, from now on the European Union starts, that were on its head, and the other horn which came up before which three fell, namely that horn which had, this is the Antichrist, which had eyes and a mouth. He did not eat. He did not devour. He did not trample. He did not, he's not like the first beast. 
he had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. And it is the truth that in the seven year period, Satan will give all his authority to the Antichrist, to the false prophet, to their kingdom, all, their, all his authority, all his power, and indeed in one period, when there will be, forgive me for this expression, there will be no opposition, there will be no Church of Christ, there will be no Holy Spirit, there will be a perfect kingdom of Satan on the earth. Only with sacrifice will, they, will the saints be able to stand, the saints of the Old Testament, of the 70th week, of whom the first fruits will be the 144,000 witnesses, 12,000 from every tribe, and from then, all nations, whoever accepts the gospel of Jesus, the word of God, and they reject with sacrifice, it won't be easy. It will be very difficult to not worship the image of the Antichrist and to not put on the mark on their right hand or their forehead. A tremendous thing. The Bible even more says that there will be such a tribulation and sorrow that hasn't occurred and will never occur again. And Christians have gone through great trials, the men of God. They have been sawed. They have been put to death by a sword. They have been cast into the lions. They have been imprisoned. They have been tortured. But imagine, our mind, the human mind cannot imagine what he is able and what he will do Filled with hatred, the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet to the men who will resist his will and they will not worship his image and they will not put on his mark on the right hand or the forehead. Let us continue. Verse 21, I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints of the 70th week, that is, which starts, as we said, with the people of Israel and prevailing against them. Elsewhere it says in the Gospel, Jesus says, pray, he says to the Israelis, that your flight will not take place during winter time, neither during the Sabbath. A great flight. The woman that God reveals in the revelation of John that runs to hide from the false prophet and the Antichrist and Satan. This great flight, this great tribulation, this great affliction that will be enforced by the Antichrist on the people who will not obey him and put on the mark. But, I read again verse 21, I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came. God intervened. And a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, along with Christ, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. As we said, the Millennium Kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and trample it, and break it in pieces, the Roman Empire. The ten corn, horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. This is the European Union. We cannot explain the ten kings. In the past we said, could this be the ten nations of Europe? It wasn't that. Then we said, maybe because it has seven heads, it's seventeen. We cannot explain everything, brethren. We just read it. And to tell you the truth, brethren, our heart is not on fire to explain these things. What our heart is on fire with is to go to the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And if we do not know everything, so what? It's not necessary for us to learn everything. Neither do we care much about these things. We read these things because the Word of God tells us to, and in amazement we read it because we see these things happening. But whatever we don't understand, we say, the Lord up there will explain us everything. We do not complain. We do not have great desire. Whatever is revealed to us by God, we know. Whatever He does not reveal to us, we must not know. And that is where we stand. Amen, brethren? In simplicity, with humility, and we wait for the Lord to come and receive us. That is the truth. So let us continue. And the ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, which is the European Union, as it appears. And after these, after the rapture of the church, another shall arise after them. When the transgressors have reached their fullness, 
a king shall arise, having fierce features and being despised. And after this, he says, after these ten, another king shall arise, and he shall be different from the first ones, and he shall subdue three kings. Try to explain this now. We don't know this. Up there, though, we will see all these things and know them. And he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, and this we have seen many times in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. He will blaspheme God. He will cancel every God and every respectful thing, and he will make himself God. He will speak pompous words against the Most High, and he shall persecute the saints of the Most High, as we said before, it is Israel, and whoever does not put on the mark, and he shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. These are the three and a half last years of his perfect tyranny, of his perfect tyranny. And the first three and a half years, he will give authorities to his own, he will favor them, he will flatter them with cunningness and everything. He will say, whoever wants to be great, let him put on the mark because I will give him authority and he will give authority. He will give out things. He will manage many things. But all these things will be lies. They will be temporary. Afterward, when the devil will fall from heaven and he will come down on earth to dwell because the first three and a half years the devil will be in heaven as it says in the Revelation. But when he falls from heaven, Satan, so he can dwell on earth, and Michael will be the one to cast him down because he is the one who is fighting. We will answer the Lord in heaven. We will be with Jesus in that period. We will not take part in wars. The church doesn't take part in wars. The angels make wars in heaven. The church is fighting here now against sin, against deceit, against lawlessness. Up there we will rest. Up there there will be peace. We will enjoy Christ. How nice it is, brethren. Seven years, that period of time, we will be enjoying Christ and we will be awaiting for the friends of the bride to come up so the wedding of the Lamb can take place up there in heaven by God Himself. But so we won't leave things in the middle. Let's go on. Three and a half years of dictatorship. But the court shall be seated, Jesus, and they shall take away His dominion to consume and destroy it forever. And we said that this is where He will cast them into the lake of fire. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. This is the millennia. Perfect prevalence of Jesus on the earth, whose kingdom is everlasting, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him in a rod of iron. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Amen. Hallelujah.